Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This, That, or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. The recording has started. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Capes and Lunatics uh, Alright, I am Phil, joining me as always, it is Lilith Hey y'all And again, we're talking in the new DC movie, Joker, so Tyler is joining us Hey What hey. up? Yes, we're here to do uh do the review because well as, as the internet um, we loved it I think as much as the internet did uh, Joker filet au deux or filet au deux or filet of fish whatever you want to call it yeah I like filet of fish a lot better hmm. there's no French in this movie it does not take place in France how dare you talk to me. all right so, all right. First, I would I want to know what time when did you just get? Well, I know when Lilith wants to see this, but uh, Tyler, what what time of day? What day did you go to see this? And how packed was the theater? Uh, we went Thursday night at six, and there was four people in the theater. Oh, nice. Well, like our theater, we have is kind of like a independent, small town theater mm-hmm. that's close by. Um, it's not like a big chain, so we like to go there because it's close and. We know the owners and everything. Nice. Um, but yeah, it was only Jania, me, and then another couple. And I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell some of the couple's comments as we go through this uh, review today. Nice. Because, yeah, because Luke and I went uh, today, Sunday, at 11.15 uh, a.m., and uh, we were two of four people in the theater, so. Nice. Yes. Nice. So, if this thing ain't making its money back. Uh you know, I can't. I can't answer that question. Well, well, um, I, well, I said I knew when I know. I know, matey. I know when you watched it. Yes, yes. I know. I know. Yeah. So, but but the kids hated it. So, well, everyone seemed to hate it. <laughs> no, it's crazy because, like, on the internet, it's like a fifty-fifty kind of thing. Like, I'm reading all the the reviews and stuff, and I'm mm. just like. Some people just really want to have Todd Phillips' dick in their mouth. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> like, no, like, I, listen, I get it. Like, the, uh, I get what he was trying to do, but for me personally, I feel like he failed miserably at it. Again, I think I, it almost occurred to me that it was almost, it's it's the the curse of the modern comic book movie. Yeah, we'll get to it. I mean, it was supposed, yeah. they literally said it was supposed to be it. So, let, let, let's get into the the, the interesting tidbit that that's kind of like the the pink elephant in the room you know it was meant to be a standalone film it was meant to be launched for you know dc black that supposed to be like the darker line of the dceu uh, but we all know that that was in trouble it was failing so it didn't really work out but you know joaquin's like hey i still want to you know have <laughs> it made a billion dollars it's gonna have a franchise it's, it's gonna have at least one more sequel like we we know this, it made a billion dollars. They yeah. were struggling at the time, and allegedly Joaquin told Todd, "Like, hey man, I, I really don't want to leave Arthur Fleck. Let's 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 figure something out." Bullshit. Um. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, just no, just no. It was well, if you, we we all know it was hey, we made a billion dollars making the indie movie we wanted about mental health, and we tricked everyone in by calling it Joker. And putting some labels out there for Gotham and naming a couple of characters. Let's see how much money we can get out of them for a sequel. That's That's exactly how I feel. That's exact. I mean, not that they didn't put in the work, but I'm just saying they, uh, I just feel like they were like, hey, we can do another movie and make it as do what we want and get a ton of money out of it. Because I mean, the budget for the first one, 50 million. Exactly. The budget for this one, 200 million. And, and I don't I know where right, that money went. I mean, I mean, I guess it's ex- inflation or something. Well, I would say inflation one, but like Joaquin got like what twenty some million for this. Todd mm-hmm. Phillips got something close. Like he got 
a lot, and Gaga got like ten million. I was gonna say she's a name. I'm sure she got something. So I mean, like almost the budget for the first film went to just the salaries of the three. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But like, so he like so this is interesting, right? So like the the literal sequel to the movie Father I do it tells you it, okay we're gonna deal with some mentally some more mental illness. Yep, like that's yep. literally what it means madness mental illness and i'm just like okay and so i mean i don't know like i just it's so weird because i just always felt like that whole idolization of arthur fleck it's like one of those characters that you miss the point you're not supposed to idolize him and i feel like maybe even todd phillips felt some responsibility to come back and tear this character down and make it obvious that you shouldn't be rooting for him i i don't know maybe he felt a little responsibility as an artist as a a director and a writer and stuff like that 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 was his duty to come back and like wait a minute these guys totally they 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 went over their heads let me let me come over here with the sledgehammer and let them know i mean i i I can i I, I mean i felt tyler's point especially with this 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 one where it's like if you had done a movie just about mental illness with arthur fleck not as the joker just it would have it, it would have been better, I think. I think again. I think Penel- it would have flopped, though. It wouldn't have made a billion dollars. No, it would have right. made a billion dollars. You, but go in that movie, call it New York, call it jo- whatever you know you want to call the, the the Thomas Wayne character, okay, and call it him clown. Mm. It's the exact same movie. Send in the lose, clown. Send in the clown. That's- you lose nothing from that movie because I mean, I guess. My thing with this movie and people's reaction to it, I never looked at after seeing Joker because he see they call him Joker, you know, and instead of uh, and a lot of times there's one comment where it says the Joker, but like in every other Batman story, you hear more of like the Joker, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, so Prince, blah, blah, blah. I never looked at it after seeing the first one like oh they made a comic book movie no, no. they made a movie about a man who is mentally ill. Who has problems? Who's in the social commentary? Who and lives they, in a society? And they threw a nut, and they threw in some some term that we know to call to to give it a sheen mm-hmm. of a comic book film. So the sequel does the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm not expecting like when I'm reviewing this movie and discussing it, the first thing that Janie and I talked about because we we Janie and I did like a rough review where we talked in the car on the way home. Or a little bit before, and then on the way home, and then we just put that up uh, on my YouTube page. And if you just toss out any kind of comic book stuff, just toss that out and look at it as the film itself. It's still kind of stinky. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It, it makes sense where it goes, okay? Mm-hmm. But it's still like the the strong, like the first film has such a strong narrative Yep. And this one is kind of like, where is it going? What's happening? <laughs> because it starts to make these subplots that go absolutely nowhere. Or padding runtime, absolutely. And that is that was one thing. When it was over, I was like, you could trim this movie down. And I don't even mind the musical stuff because it's I feel the like... the courthouse it's- scenes that kill me. Like, why are we recapping the first movie? It made a billion dollars. Everybody that's seeing this movie has seen the first one. You, padding I the feel- runtime. There's so much that could just be trimmed and tightened um, of just certain scenes. Like, I like the fact that they did the court scene and they had um, Mr. Puddles back and yeah. uh, Sophia back. It brought some continuity from the first film of returning characters. And, like, but we have no idea how much time has passed between the events of the first movie. Well, they tell us it's and two this years. One. It's 1983. Did? So the first movie okay, was 91. I, I missed that then. Yeah, it was, um, it was one line. Two years. Yeah. Um, I thought we would get to see something like some sort of like interesting meta commentary or something by showing us the made for TV movie at some point because they keep referencing it. Like, um, yeah, just, like, I, I want to see that one. Lifetime, Lifetime had a ball with this story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we would have got to see footage from that. Um, but my biggest problem is also my favorite thing in this movie, and that's Harley. Oh, yeah. okay. And because I, because I find that she, her character was interesting, star effort, but extremely underutilized. But at the same time, what made me frustrated is they try. I feel there's a complete subplot with her that was cut out. Because if you go back and watch the trailers, there's the scene of her in the elevator with the short hair and the black, which is the outfit that she's wearing on the stairs when Arthur sees her at the end. That's cut out, and I'm kind of curious of what because. 
her like putting on her makeup was supposed to mirror him uh, in the first movie when he's getting ready and he comes out, you know, before the TV as Joker and everything. Um, but, you know, they set her up that supposedly she checked herself in. You know, her parents are still alive. Everything she's saying. So she becomes more of our unreliable narrator in this movie, even though she's not leading the movie. But what got me is it felt like so many things that she did, either she would felt like is she paying people to be part of this is because we have the scene where she gets into the prison, supposedly, and sees Arthur when he's in lockup. OK, supposedly. Is that really happening or is that his mind? Exactly. Um, I don't know if there's evidence either way. All right. Somehow they stop giving Arthur his medicine. No, he says he de- he stopped taking it. That but, was but, like watch, a- but watch the scene when he looks at the cup, and then he looks at the nurse, and then he smiles. Hmm. It's because it's not his medicine or the right medicine or something. Uh. It's changed. How does she get into the trial? There's one seat open in the back. And you see all the people fighting to get in there. And his lawyer doesn't even really want her there. But she gets in. She gets to place herself. Insert herself. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It feels like there was more with her what's going on than we really got to explore with her character. Well, and there's no tea, no shade. Lovely woman. Beautiful ball gowns. Love me some Gaga. Don't come at me, little monsters. Awesome singer. Not such a great actress. Um, so I could understand why they cut a lot of... If there was like a some more that was supposed to be around her. I know. And they prob- had to kind of yeah. cut it because it just kind of didn't work. They kind of probably took the best takes and scenes and said, well, we thought we were going to do this and ended up going a different direction. Because like, honestly, the projects that Gaga, if you've ever seen her do acting like that Versace movie, it's a little more catered and crafted towards her and her her background of being attacked and stuff like that you know what i mean so this one was kind of like out of her wheelhouse i really was kind of shocked honestly that she would have signed on to a sequel no less so i'm thinking there was like some stuff behind the scenes of like where they thought they could do something and realized they probably should i mean i i i, and I don't want the phillips cut no 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 <laughs> i mean i i, 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 I would I, just watch the deleted scenes honestly like on a release because I just found her, what they were doing with her character more interesting because it seemed like she was up to something. Like, Jania asked me at one point, like, do you think she's a plant? I was like, I don't know. It would would be interesting if she was. Do you think she's the one that sent in at the guy at the end? Well, we'll get to it. I don't want to do the spoilers just yet. Spoilers abound, guys, obviously. I mean, no, yeah. So, yeah, I I get what you're saying. Those were the vibes, especially like, because that was kind of my take on it. Yeah, I kind of took yeah, it. She might have sent that guy. I kind of took he's, it. That... He's the actual, you know, real Joker maybe in this universe. Nah. And that's kind of what I was kind of wondering. Like, was she going to be like, he wouldn't embrace Joker. So now she is. I don't. Yeah. You know, I, I was She's like. She's more punchline than she is Harley, actually, when you think about it. If you know anything about punchline in the DC comics. That, I mean, those were the vibes that I, were getting, that I was getting, actually. And I was, I was taking her character. I was fine with what they were doing with her character. But then I felt like when they said that her parents are alive and that she went, she has her master's in psychology. I was like, okay, now you're just trying to add the be... Harley Quinn actual backstory a little bit, right? And I'm like, and then I feel like, well, that opens it up now more that what is her character's deal? Because now I'm more interested that she is this well off and everything. I want to know more about how she got obsessed with Joker, where she comes in. Well, like self radicalization, I think, is an underlying thing of this film and the, the and the, on the other film, specifically the other film that carries over to this. I think that that's what that was kind of a reference to, and that's why mm-hmm. I said I feel like Todd almost felt like an obligation to just really hammer home the point about, hey, you're not really supposed to be this guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I he's like, if I'm gonna make a sequel and people have grossly misunderstood my work, let me let me go back and fix that. I really feel like that's what this is about. But how many characters do they do, do they make where they're we're not but people start root like they're the bad guy like they're you're not supposed Todd to. Todd is kind of an arrogant. Listen, I, I love the guy, and you know most directors in in their own right in some kind of way, and I mean this in the best way. You kind of have to be in Hollywood, especially to be a director. Is an arrogant asshole. So if you take his message wrong, and he gets a chance to let you know, hey, you're wrong, they're gonna mm-hmm. take it every single time. Yeah, yeah. No, I so, just I just took it as she was just um. I don't know if she was obsessed. She was. She was. Well, she was obsessed. 
on. She was obsessed with Joker, and as we saw, once you know he was kind of done with it at, towards the end, she he she just wanted She's to. Like, not, oh, you don't want to do? What I want to do. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I don't know about the guy at the end, but do you think she called the cops on him on that on the stair? No, I don't. No, I don't think. No, but see, I feel like the whole fact that she moved into his apartment and was like living in that in it and everything like was so under cut and mm-hmm. under just because we saw her like, in the elevator that was it yeah but yeah like it was like that was a big deal and then like they have the scene where she puts the gun to her head so did it I even feel like, happen you know what i mean is he but, just but, wants to die but, in arkham so maybe that's the whole thing and we get a but, joker three my, my thing was like the gun to her head was kind of like her doing this ritual of like what arthur went through if supposedly if she's watched this movie that was supposed to tell his story she kind of has an idea, you know, because that's why I said like the, the movie's kind of interesting because if Arthur like, you know, there was that book that somebody wrote about Arthur and everything that uh, the guy wanted Arthur to sign it. So maybe you know, Arthur told like, oh, I went and I did these activities before getting ready for Murray's show. Yeah, between that, so, like that she and the was movie. creating like yeah. a ritual of the of you know in the sense becoming just like Arthur because there is that drastic change and I mean. Like I said, for the most part, I kind of assumed that she was there on the stairs because we're not really given anything to help us discern if she was or wasn't. Um, like it, it just doesn't because no one else interacts with her. But then why would Arthur see her differently? And if it's his mind, why is in his mind her rejecting him? Like if, if what he really wants and he's been embracing her is for her to be a part of him, why all of a sudden would he project her as rejecting him instead of accepting him? If it is his mind but yeah why would he she even lie to him yeah I, th- I mean i think just the musical stuff and the variety show thing where is it's delusions but it did not need those musical numbers no i know it didn't but i i didn't mind most of them like i'd have to go back through and tell you like okay you could have cut it here you could have done this a, like just a little shorter it's like some of them i didn't mind because like for me the the joaquin scene they didn't need to happen like the lady got out totally i could be i could be totally fine with that but the the, the joaquin phoenix stuff now they could have cut that they could cut it. You know, it didn't like I, I feel like it's it's an extension of the music the way they talked about in the first film. But the first film had such a clear voice of what we want to talk about and what we want to to do. And this one's kind of like we're making it up as we go. Yep. All right. And I feel like it overinflated. Um, and they wasted my boy in this movie. They just threw him in there just as a name. Pissed me off. Mr. Harvey Dent. They're just like, we're just throwing oh, him in he, there. His, his face melted off at, at the explosion at the courthouse. Okay. okay. I know. I looked at Jenny. I was like, this is pathetic. This is bull crap. Like, don't do not do this to him. Oh, well, that, that's the other thing with the explosion. Wasn't she there when the bomb went off? I'm like, boy, she looks pretty uh, no. okay, okay <laughs> when she meets him later on the stairs. She already left. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, she did run. That's right. She did run out because he was... So I just want to talk about where we're at budget, uh, box office wise. So the budget was two hundred million, and I think it's probably a little bit over over that when you include marketing. And right now we're sitting at one hundred twenty one or so million. So is that worldwide or domestic? I think that's it's worldwide. Domestic. I think it's oh my worldwide. god, that's the worldwide. Oh my god, and like the word of mouth is, "Hey, don't go see this." Yeah, I was gonna say like, it's Sunday, every single it. like reviewer that's not like you know, um, like extra or you know a hollywood accent variety you know they're like hey just just save your money wait for it to come to streaming or dvd you know like literally everyone that that hated that, that doesn't well, care for the movie there are people like i said I, i'm seeing reviews so i i'm really confused um people don't see reviews that people say they like it i I, like I, th- I get i get the i get the actual thing that he's trying to say i just don't like the manner in which he did it i feel like some people are like, oh, it's a masterpiece. You know, no. it's it's not really supposed to be a comic book movie. It's this art. Well, that's fine. They don't call it Joker. It's like, duh. They don't, don't call, call it Joker. But, yeah. but, but I'm like, even if I just look at it, like I said, if I'm watching this void of the comic book and I'm just watching it as a film, like Jania looked at me at one time and goes, I'm kind of bored. Yeah, there's no plot. Things just actually happen. <laughs> you know, not af- very cohesive for me. Afterwards, Jania's biggest thing was actually, I'm bored? At times, and I'm very underwhelmed. And I didn't have like high expectations. You know, like I'm not going in thinking like this is gonna be Joker and Harley's big thing. I'm like, no, this is the story filtered through that first movie. So just whatever they deliver us, okay. And then, but at the same time, like I still, I think there's shots in it that are beautiful. Yeah. 
and there's some great acting scenes, but it's like, it's one of those, like you have a great scene, a great scene, a great scene, but you put them together. It's not making a good movie. Exactly. Uh, okay. The, 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 uh, the sum of the total parts is not, I think the, the, the parts are better yeah. than the sum. <laughs> for sure. I mean, okay. Big spoiler. Do you think she was actually pregnant? No, she said she was lying. Oh, did she? Basically. Yeah. I, I, it's weird. I, I have she to was, watch but... it again. I'd like to watch it again. And of course, like, you know, watching it at home, um, turn on the subtitles just to get mm-hmm. all the dialogue. But I think the whole she's pregnant thing, Total I think lie. that's supposed to be ambiguous because when he says it to her on the stairs, she doesn't say anything or respond at all. Um, like I said, we, it's hard to tell what conversation is actually real in this movie. And that's kind of frustrating, too, at times. And I was like, if she is pregnant, I was like, damn, that was the most potent. She's pregnant five- with the twins, boys. That- we did it. I was like, that's the most potent five seconds I've ever heard of. But the, and that's, that's the what, what's that myth that, like, uh, you know, um, quote, unquote, crazy people, um, their sperm stronger or something like that? It was like an old wives tale about that, actually. I'm just, so maybe I'm that's a reference to that as well. I don't know. You know, my thing is the time. Uh, there's you're not really given how much time passes. You know, of it's like madness. Was, you know, he's supposed to be in the hole exactly the hole for like two weeks and everything, but you never quite know how the how long the events of this movie. And, and maybe that's also stretch. another reference him being in solitary confinement and how it, they say it, it does drive the uh, people in there crazy. <laughs> Even like sane people can come out if they stay in there too long, a little crazier too. So oh. he's already a little off his rocker. So I feel like there's clues and stuff in the first one of stuff that you can really debate whether that really happened the way it happened or it didn't. Um, one of the biggest ones, okay, for me is the whole time I'm watching this film, they're talking about how many people Arthur killed, and I'm listening and I'm okay, I'm thinking, okay, okay, so. At the end of the first film, he's in that room with the lady, and then when he comes walking out, he's got, like, bloody footprints. And so I'm thinking, like, everyone's like, did he kill the interviewer or not? But in this film, like, when they reference how many people Arthur has killed, she's never mentioned. Mm-hmm. Unless he just attacked her and she's lived through it. See, that I, that's what I came with. And I said, but what would have been... on on the stand if that would have happened, too, though, so... Oh. And I, then I told you, Neil, would it have been more interesting if the end of this movie was just him back in that room again, just a moment before the scene where he walks out with the bloody footprints, like the whole thing's him in that room, just laughing to himself. Like, once again, like, you wouldn't get it. Yeah. You know, and in the first film, there's like I said, the there's like clocks and time clocks. If you watch the background, I have certain times that are all the same. And you can kind of start to think, like, is this real or whatever? But this movie doesn't have those type of triggers to dissect the movie. But it was slapped and... together. They didn't care. They just want the money. And look how that's working out for them. Like, I mean, it, it, I mean, it, it, they wanted the money. They got their money. <laughs> you know, the, the, the creators, they got their money. It's the, the studio that decided to, you yeah. know. F- and it, makes, it also makes me say, you're missing the point of this movie and why it made the money it did. Yep. That's what I said. I said the, the that, moment that, they announced the this man, movie. Anything makes a billion dollars. Marvel, DC, whatever. Whatever. How Hollywood. Property or whatever studio, they're going to do a sequel. It doesn't matter if the person says, no, it's, it's kind of like James Cameron where he's like, I, I made a masterpiece. I'm not coming back to make T2. Like, like, come on, get out of here. Um, once again, I said, I'll say, I said it before. Or, I'll say, you know, Ridley Scott. He finally came back to the franchise because they butchered it so bad. So, and he was like, "Well, here, fine. You want to know some stuff?" And got his money and left. Mm. You know, I don't, I don't fault the creator for doing it, but we we got this. We we didn't get back, girl. That's all. So, because I mean, this they took five years. I know it took five years to get get this. This, and I, I, my thing is for people who are trying, like, who thought this was like the, you know, the Joker or like a real Joker, and I'm like, no, from the beginning. They've never as said. As they said this. Arthur Fleck, no name associated. Well, I'm like, oh, okay. We're on a grift yeah. here, kids. Stop it. And I mean, they didn't even play like they really didn't even play with our like in the Killing Joke. You know, I think a lot of people missed the point of the Killing Joke. And Phil and I talked about this that in the end of the book, he says that's one way I choose to remember it, or yep. you know, it can happen different ways. I you know, 
And people take that story and think that's the origin. No, that's how he's telling you. It's the whole the whole thing is him lying to you through the book. You know what's real and what's not. And I, I mean, they could have played with that some way of like, ah, this is one way I like well, to. Well, and talk I think about they how, gave that job to Har- uh, Harleen you know? Lee. So I mean, even them calling her Lee didn't bother me because it just feels like something they would have done. You know, just to kind of get around that. Uh, that uh, whole thing, you know. Do you think this whole I, thing? Do you think this whole thing, including the ending, was plan always the plan, or are they no. just like, oh no, uh, yeah, uh, that's what I was thinking because it's like, okay, now it's like with gun stuff coming, they're like, yeah, no, this ain't. Gonna. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it never well, mattered. Todd, I mean, okay, we're gonna talk about the end. That's fine. Todd Phillips said in the beginning, back when the first movie came out, maybe this is the guy that is the you know is the Joker, but inspires the real Joker. You know, and he now said, he's firmly said that, that that that's what it is. And that, and that's the thing is like he said that before, and I'm like to me that just helps sell the fact that this he's not making the origin of the Joker, guys. Exactly. He's making a movie he wants, and he's you know what this movie is? is. Huh. It's the Buzz Lightyear movie from Pixar, basically. <laughs> oh man, oh. you but, understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. That's yes. Is. Especially when they referenced the made for TV movie, I was like, aha. So. I just, yeah, I mean, my, my thing is, like, I went in with just expectations of, like... The bar was oh, in hell, and they still managed to go under it. I wanted to see an interesting movie that would make me think just like the first one. Like, I wasn't... And the idea of Harley was interesting to see how they are going to do it. But then I feel, like I said, I feel like that's the part that makes me the the angriest. Because I feel like they tried to do her character, and then they start to give more interesting points with her character but then never really let us see her story or who she really is or what she's up to or i mean i, I mean well, by the time you get to the end i'm like i don't like her because she's just she's uh, like manipulating like she's she, well she's, she's, manip- she's manip- manipulating this uh guy with all you know with mental issues and it's just and that's why I think it would have been more interesting if, like, she got them to stop giving him her, his meds. She was, like, giving the nurse money so that she could bring Joker back out. Because it's got them. All you need is 20 bucks for anybody at see, this point. See, that's the other thing I wasn't clear on, Tyler, because, I, you know, did they, did they not give him his meds? You know, like, the actual people well, who I were... I mean, res- Arkham is an abusive place specifically. Yeah, I get that. Trust, but so it's it- like the guards are beating them. So, yeah, if the nurses don't want to do their job, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't even think it's malice intent. It's just actual wage kind of situation at that point too because Uh remember they were having like basically riots in the first one too and you know they were kind of alluding to like the garbage strike and all the things that kind of happened around oh yeah they're cutting back on city services yeah yeah so you know Mm -hmm. lots lots of things lots of commentary but i feel like everything was very and even in the first movie it felt everything was very superficial it's like literally not that deep you know, uh-huh. um, but what the minute that the the it opens and it's an animated sequence, I'm like, okay, here we go, boys. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, l- let's let's talk about the animated sequence. I'm like, oh, we're gonna do. Oh, he's he's got schizophrenia. He's got a, you know a double person. Because boy, in the '80s, was that 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 a uh, answer to a lot of things at trials? Can can we? I thought about this with they they open with a cartoon. And then throughout the movie, they're watching cartoons. They're watching Pepe Le Pew. Mm-hmm. And, and I thought what, of, Harleen is Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> yes, that was my thought. And yep. he's the cat. Mm-hmm. You know, she's the one that's, you know, thinking he's something he's not and trying to get him, you know. Relentlessly, and, yeah. And that was my, my takeaway from, like, why that cartoon and, like, how that is. Uh, that and person, that's why I say. He wanted some shekels. <laughs> Warner Brothers was like, well, you know. And that's why I feel like... Or that's Todd Phillips saying it. Release that Acme movie. She was more of the villain of the story, but we cut out or just did not allow her story to really be told because I feel like she was... had She had more of a role. But let's talk about that ending. We were getting there. We kind of got off. Let's talk about that ending. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. So they, I did. At the end, Arthur Fleck dies. Well, yeah, he gets stabbed by, the, by another inmate and then... Are they kind of? Is that supposed to be Heath Ledger? Well, he's Ledger? carving the Glasgow smile. So. Yeah, because he's yep. carving the smile after he stabs Arthur, and, and he's him, yeah. he's laughing. He he's laughing. He's carving the smile. He told a joke, you know, beforehand. You know, I just you know everyone said the the controversial ending, and I watched that, and I was kind of like that's the natural conclusion for me. 
Yeah, by same the here. Sword, you die by the sword. Yeah, but I just wonder for a lot of audiences. It was like we had two movies named Joker, and it's like you didn't get the real Joker maybe till like the last yeah, minute. Cause, no, cause it's like, the joke's on you. Todd Phillips is the Joker. Uh, but, uh, guys, come on, be serious. <laughs> That's what I like. I expected Arthur to not. That's make it what out. the title like, should have been: Joker. The joke's on you. I, I honestly thought that they were gonna do that. I swear to God, I thought, when they announced the sequel, I promise you, I was like, they were gonna do punchline or the joke's on you. I promise you, I was like, I just knew it was gonna be that. Oh. And they kind of failed me on that one yet again. I kind of would have laughed. It's like I guess some people have said like if you watch that inmates in the background all the time just yeah well, not all down. the time it's about halfway through the movie is when you start to notice him i mean i guess if i rewatch it maybe he was there from the beginning but it's and about literally halfway through the movie where it's kind of like intention he's intentionally shot to be within but sort of out of the frame you know that kind of thing so i'm just like whatever and i, I kind of wish that they had just cast Kat cameron monahan in that part <laughs> Boy, like, they, they don't ever want to hear that name at DC and Warner Brothers again. <laughs> you, you mean the actual actor who the, played the best the, Joker origin we've yes. ever had ever? Yeah, but like the best, like I, I, th- I mean, he needs more credit because he played three distinctively different takes on the same character in the same show. And, you know, and people people don't want to give Gotham its flowers. It's fine. Like either you get it or you don't. Like when I'm watching the Penguin show, I'm just like, no. I don't like this. <laughs> Riddler, the, the Batman what? movie with Robert Pattinson. I'm just like, no. <laughs> no. My thing is, like, I, you know, it's, it's, it also, like, you know, there's one Wayne reference in this. Mm-hmm. There's the Wayne building. There's no mention of, like, I, I told Janine, I was like, if I felt like they were really trying to build from what they did last time, there would be some sort of, like, on the news, like, Arthur Flick, responsible for the riots and the breakup that resulted in the death. Of Thomas and Martha Wayne, you know, exactly. something like that with all the news stuff that we were having inserted and talked about around him. And yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, it's like, yeah, he killed five. Well, actually, six people. But it's like, yeah, no mention of, oh, he started this riot that killed. I'm sure other people got killed, too, in that riot. Do we do we know that he killed his mom? I couldn't remember that. from the Yeah, he put, we he put, gonna, the, he yeah, put the he pillow did. when she was in the hospital. I, he put the pillow over her head. I thought yeah. so. But then I looked at Janine you know, like, was that one that we just assumed? I yeah, remember. and like I said, it's tough to say. I just really. rewatched it recently. Yeah, yeah, no, he put the he actually put the pillow on her face. Yeah, we were going to rewatch it, but we just didn't have I the could, time. I didn't have the heart. <laughs> I've only watched Joker. It was on like TV. I just left it on in the background. I'm like, okay. I yeah, watched it in theaters, well, to mm-hmm. and then I watched it once later, and that was it. Because, like I said, it is a good movie if you just take out the like the Joker element, just look at it. About it's a man. Film. It's, it really yeah. is. And I appreciate it, but like, just don't put Joker on it. Like, that, that's the whole thing. Like, just because you, you couldn't make the movie you wanted to, you, 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 you okie doked Warner Brothers, you're not going to okie doke me. I can see it for what it is. And like I said, it's got some great ideas, some great themes that needed to be discussed, but the fact that you put the name Joker on it negates all the things that you put in there. Yeah. And you know what's, you know what's funny? I'm going to share this. So, Judy and I went and we walk up there and I hand them my. Uh, rewards card when I go to order our tickets and she, the lady goes you have two free tickets do you want to redeem them yes good for you <laughs> so all I paid for was popcorn nice <laughs> yeah that the theater gets that money good so. yeah yeah and I always like to support my theater so I didn't even give this movie any of my, my, my money nice <laughs> but you know what like okay so when the movie was over we're walking out and the couple comes down sta- comes down like the, the seats and the guy looks at me and goes, this ain't making a billion dollars. And the lady's like, <laughs> she goes, she goes, yeah, this was kind of boring and dumb. <laughs> and I was just laughing. And I'm just like, oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel you. I see what you're saying. You oh. Know, and I, oh, my Lord. Okay, I, okay, okay, hold on. Me and Luke are walking out of theater. Usually he'll be like, I like that or I didn't like that. You know, it was too long or I didn't like it or something. We walked out of that. He goes, oh, my God, what was that? <laughs> I was like, I'm like, guy. I'm sorry. Who well, watch a movie by t- directed by Tom Phillips? <laughs> not Luca, not again. <laughs> not again. I know. My, he was my, like, what was that? Like, like I said, it's there's interesting parts in there, and I bet you could go in there and edit a good movie out of that by just cutting a few yeah, things like out. Yeah, it's a short film. At best. I mean, make it like an hour and thirty. Well, it's an hour and 38, well, not time, it's 138 minutes as it stands, and I say we could have done this in 60. Absolutely. And again, especially this one, it just seems to me it's just like the world is beating down on this mentally 
you know, man with mental well, again, issues. Again, society. Like well, that, yeah. that, that was the driving, fi- uh, a, you know, heart of the story. And again, if that's the story, if that's the story you want to tell, fine. But I think it gets lost when you pin the Joker to it. Yeah. I mean, because, like, if you look at it, they're trying to tell the story about a person who's mentally ill. And if they're trying, you know, if they really wanted to tell us more about that story, you talk about where we were as a society in the early yeah, 80s, looking, looking at mental illness, you know, yeah. and the care that people have with mental illness. Because that was also um, around the time when we started really closing down state hospitals and they were just kind of running the streets with no care. And and, and that's why a lot of mental illness, uh, people with mental illness end up in jail, which is definitely not the place for them to, but there's nowhere else for them to go either. I know it wouldn't have made a billion dollars, but do you think they could have made something if they had been like, oh, you know, this is the, these two movies are the story of, you know, a brand new character, but it's like the serial killer that ran the streets of Gotham years before Batman ever came about. Could they have made? That's a TV show. That's not a. That's true. Movie. That's true. I don't know if you can get seasons out of that though. No, but, but we I got just... seasons out of Gotham, babes. Oh, true. Yeah, let's but, be real, but let's be but, real here now. But Goth- Gotham fell into that prequel, uh, where it's like, well, we start with being a prequel, but eventually we're just doing the show. Without really having the character that the show is about, yeah, but at least well, you had. Specifically for Batman, there. they have to skirt around that specific. You had a few, but a Nightwing show. Gotham had a few points. It had the Penguin, the Riddler, and uh, Jim, it had every Jim, Batman Jim, Jim Gordon's penis Tuesdays. that drove the women crazy. Yeah, come on. And, and every let's, let's, I forget Stabby Babs. Oh, yeah, true. Every, well, every Batman villain but Two Face was in Gotham. He we got a Harvey. Up. Well, we got, Harvey no. Dent showed up. We, we got Harvey Dent in season one for one episode, then he disappeared for the rest. And he of came the... back towards the end. It's like season three or four or something. But yeah, it was like basically a glorified cameo. But yeah. But he never was Two Face. He was always just Harvey. So he's the one Batman villain that Batman will actually have to fight as Batman, not as Bruce Wayne. Well, yeah, because most versions of the story, he doesn't get his face melted until he, Bruce is already Batman. Exactly. At least, at least they understood that. <laughs> But as, but as far as like if this movie if they wanted to do this movie, I th- I still think they could have done the same basic story but better. But once again, they'd have to lean into comic book where Harley's his doctor. He gets and moved- they specifically said they didn't want to do that because it's problematic. My like, babes, the whole Joker thing is problematic. So <laughs> yeah, whole, the whole story it, it, was problematic. Exactly. I mean, you, the whole first movie was about pushing the edge, and you know, and this one I. In a way, I feel like this one played it more safe. Yeah. Like as, as far as like well, the you first gotta remember, one. Like, this is post COVID. This is where pe- there's so much like uh, quote unquote woke people with their discourse that they just did. They 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 were definitely still wanting to make another billion dollars. So that's I feel specifically why they didn't make Harley the doctor because it'd have been those young Gen Z and Alpha kids. Oh my god, that's so problematic! I can't believe they put that on. Their screen. whole relationship's problematic. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. It's like everybody's like, "Oh, to be like Harley and Joker." I like, did you mean Morticia and Gomez? Well, that's, that's what me and Jania, You should be. Well, <laughs> that's what me and Jania are going as this year for Halloween. As everyone should. It's the best cost, uh, couple costume ever. Yeah. Nice. I'm just saying, the kids today, man. That, I feel like this is just very, very much in the vein of like, let's let's just try to recapture the magic. Let's try not to offend people. And I'm like, babe, but you're gonna offend the people that saw the first movie. So, like, I don't even know. <laughs> but I feel like when when you don't have a, a a singular voice, and you're trying not to offend or do anything, you're not really creating anything that creating- actually says anything. Yeah. You're just, and that's why. I mean, okay, have you guys heard how these studios are supposedly gathering these mega fan like groups to help? Oh, I did see that. Yeah, they've yeah. been doing that since uh, 2022, basically. I did see that. Yeah, and I'm just like, that's stupid Hollywood is crumbling anyway and I'll be glad to see what comes out because it's 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 been time for Hollywood to crumble in that system to go away because it's a mess Hollywood capes and lunatics (laughs) Uh, we can save it I don't want to save it I want something new to come from it it's over it's over like ever since Marvel made a billion dollars with the super (laughs) with the multiverse superhero franchise like it it has been IP or uh, non original IP after IP. It was it was always it was always gonna crumble. The bubble has burst, people. Okay, <laughs> like we're still chasing it, but we clearly saw the bubble burst. So figure it out. They need their Deadpool Wolverine. I mean that that should have happened a long time ago. Well, yeah. That's the only that's the only setting grace of it. Like, well, this should have happened a long time ago. We finally gave the fans what they wanted, and there you go. When you give your fans something they actually want and have been craving. 
Yeah. And it's not just nostalgia brain rot slop. Well, may, maybe crypto appearing in the Superman movie will, will uh, turn things around, which again, Mark Wade announced on this show, kids. Mm, true, true. I was there, yes. I was there. I, I, I don't, I mean, I have hopes. I wouldn't say high hopes because like DC is just such a dumb. Warner Brothers is such a dumpster fire right now. I mean, but sadly, but yeah, it's, it's it, it breaks my heart because I'm finally getting this. I'm thinking I'm probably getting the Superman that I've wanted this whole time live action, like the the actual true successor to like Christopher Reeves. Like that's that's the vibes I feel like he's going for, and it's just like too little, too late. And you know, there's just been like they've been trying to salvage the reputation of Superman, but it's just been such an uphill battle such an yeah. uphill battle at this point and it doesn't it didn't have to be like this this movie didn't have to be like this <laughs> everything Warner's touched it, it, that is related to the dc pipe didn't have to be like this like they had many better ideas and they just went with the lowest common denominator and that's just really not a good way to run a movie studio in my personal opinion and i mean i get why sony's doing it but, but uh well sony has to out of contractual well obligation. yeah because every don't... two years they have to make some spider-man related movie yeah. or they lose the rights and they won't get the sweet sweet mcu money but so, i'm just like why i totally get that on the sony side dc has one of others has no because no, they have all that yeah but i'm just like why does everything uh, every other thing uh, the other thing have to be a villain thing but well that's the best characters in the dc universe <laughs> I no. want a Sinestro movie. I mean, I could have done without the Green Lantern. If they would have just focused on Sinestro and the Green Lantern movie, that movie would have been a banger. I said what I said. Mm-hmm. Again, they or if it would have come out, if it would have come out in 2007, the exact same movie out in 2007, people would look back at it like, yeah, it was okay. You know, they wouldn't. If they would have actually did the damn Barry Allen movie with Ryan Reynolds, that's where they effed up. We could have literally been way ahead of Marvel at that time. But you know, I digress. I digress. Could have, would have, should have. Too many other heroes, yeah. too. They, they could, yeah, come on. And also, if we're going to do a Green Lantern movie, it shouldn't have been how, especially at that specific time. We all know it should have been. Stay with me. John Stewart. John Stewart. Thank you. I was, yeah. was going to throw a little for a loop and go, Kyle Rayner. And you know what? You want to know who? I know this is controversial, but it could have been Will Smith, and that shit would have did a billion fucking dollars. Oh, man. That's, but, that movie would have slapped. <laughs> I'm telling you because, like, low key, people are still clamoring for. Hancock. They're like, come on, give us the 10 year chip sequel. I'm just saying. He he did Gangbusters and Independence Day. Like, I'm I'm just saying it would have made sense for the uh for the studio at the time. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Too little too late though. But I just I don't know. It's just something about this movie that just it's just stuck in my craw. Like I just wish it was better. My thing was I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I was like, mm, it's just okay. it, yeah. yeah. Like Jania, like I said, she summed it up by saying underwhelming. And when we did like our before we knew the cinema score, okay, we were like, what would you give it out of uh, you know, I was we did our ratings out of ten. And I said like a six, she did like a five, and then we said, What letter grade would you give? I was like, I give like a C, C minus, C. She goes, D. I was like, yeah, Oh D for dog shit for me. And I was like, and I was like, I give it a C because I think there's some beautiful shots and they said great acting and scenes, but as a collective, just there's something missing. And it's not even like, you know what? it's heart, soul and care. That's what's missing. Like I said, this feels very slapped together, very much trying to chase that formula, but at the same time, trying to counter counteract the message from the first movie. So well, it's just, I don't know. I don't get it. I mean, you have that whole scene where he breaks down where he's like, I'm not, you know, I never took in the first movie that, Joker and him were two different like personalities. Exactly. I, just, I mean, I just, but again, they were just doing that to try to get him off. Hey, um, but like he he just he was Joker and Joker was him. He just he just wanted to like. Well, that's kind of what like he him. said at the end. He was, it was like, yeah, it was me. Yeah, that's just, it was me. Like, and he starts to say like there was no, there is no Joker. Like, and kind of separating himself from that identity. So I I don't know. Like it's like at the end it was just you know little. A torch to be passed, my friend. A torch to be passed. Yeah, little boy Arthur just, I was not this. And, you know, they set up for the real Joker to cut his face and go crazy and... Never to be heard from again. <laughs> poor Arthur. Yeah, honestly, at the end of the day, poor Arthur. I think that's the one thing about this movie is you... Like, I think if it would be interesting to watch them both back to back. Just to kind of see Arthur. Because then you, like, you see him even more as like being this person. You're like, I feel bad for this dude. But I don't know. I've like just the first movie felt dark and strong, 
And this one just did not have that. Like, this one was mostly courtroom art. scenes and him being locked up in this cell. That's just... Yeah, everybody's worried about the musical, uh, the musical aspect. I'm worried about. I was like, wait a minute, I don't want no damn courthouse drama as a Joker sequel. Because <laughs> that took up most of the time. If we're being honest, I feel I feel like everyone's going to jump to like the musical as part. I mean, no, the musical part didn't bother me. I feel like some of it was a little too long, but. All in all, I don't feel like that's what killed it. Like I feel the like the best thing about this movie is the Lady Gaga and Bruno Mars song "Die with a Smile." Chef's kiss. That's the only good thing this movie has done for the universe. <laughs> there it is. That, that's your. That's that's the nip to go out on film right there. <laughs> that's right. All right. So, what would you would you are your grades still going to stay the same from your initial thing after mulling it over, or did it get lower, higher? It's like I said. Eh, I give it like a. I'm going to say a six. It's still a C, C minus, somewhere in there. And I think that just comes down to interesting visuals. They did well, but the story just doesn't feel like there's a straight. There's, I feel like there's too much questions and too much of like, why do we have this? What are we doing here? What's really going on? And not even in the sense of like the first one, you're like, what, what happened? But you knew where this movie was going in the first one. Like in this one, I thought like there's too many things that are just kind of happening that you're like, where, what is this? And I feel like you could, if you cut the Harley character out of this, I think you almost have the exact same movie. He just doesn't yep. have anybody he's bouncing off with or, you know, fantasizing about or whatever. But if you would have had her character be the one kind of behind the scenes, like, let's stop giving Arthur his medicine. And she's like, you know, doing things to help fuel and push the Joker back out there. And we saw that. And we saw that she was more pure villainous. I would have liked that, but we didn't get that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's. I'd say, C- minus maybe. Again, it's, if you have nothing, absolutely nothing else to do, maybe watch it, but yeah, don't expect like a... I'm gonna be TV interested movie. to see, you know how like, um, Madam Web kind of like, once it came to Netflix, kind of got like a little bit of resurgence? Oh, I did I did see people were, were uh, comparing it to Madam Web, so... Yeah, because Madam Web. I think Web's it's better than Madam Web. Don't get me wrong, but anything, almost anything, is. Yeah. Well, Madam Web's uh, cinema score and Rotten Tomatoes and everything was uh, higher. Oh, <laughs> wow! That's that's, that's what I'm seeing. That, well, it's a lot of astroturfing in those in the IMVD and um, a couple of the other places. Like, I, I've literally seen that one review posted like for the same review, literally the same review, thirty five times. So. Mm, I'll wait till they figure that out. Well, and a lot of a lot more eye candy in Madam Web too. Yeah. So I mean, it's not, I'm not maybe not for the plot, but do movies even have plots anymore, or is it just a string of events? Because I feel like that is just a big criticism of a lot of the movies that I've watched in 2024. I think that happens when you're trying to appease your four quadrant, and nobody actually wants to take a chance on a story. Um, it's either that, or it's like a strong MacGuffin. Yeah, we got We have to do this to do, you know, and everything. Um, we gotta, you know, get this item, and so I feel like, like that's, my best of list for twenty twenty four is gonna be so damn short for movies this year. I, I honestly don't even know what my best of for twenty. Well, again, the poll is is and the poll's smaller too because I mean we kind of got chipped because of the 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 writer strike, right? So. Was there was the allegedly? We, yeah. It's kind of like after a point, like let's just be honest, they're they're running out of steam. They don't know what's. Wow, well, yeah, yeah. I've been I've been on a constant disappointment outside of the exceptions of maybe ten. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've been on a kind of downward spiral since Tenet. To be honest, we had a short kind of resurgence with uh, the Barbie movie and Oppenheimer, and then we're kind of back down to sliding. Although Dune Two was pretty good, we were still. It, it's like it's like the exception, not the rule. Like we used to have good, solid mid-budget movies and like everything just wants to be a blockbuster now and that's the problem we got to get back to our roots you know what movie i really enjoyed a movie to make a billion dollars like be happy with 500 million Uh you know what movie i really enjoyed this summer was the bike riders oh yeah austin butler i went with i went to the theater to see that because i just really wanted to because i told you like just something about it like this is kind of the vibe of a movie i've been wanting to see like let's go to the theater to support it and everything um it, you know, and I, I really enjoyed it. I didn't have anything else to say afterwards. I just thought it was a it was a good movie. It was, you know, it was a refreshing for everything else to what we, we keep getting. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, do you want to talk some comic books now? Uh, yeah. Hey, Tyler, did you read DC All In? 
special? Uh, yes. Oh, yes, like, I have so many thoughts. Oh Let's my! <laughs> oh my! No, no. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a couple that I gotta bounce. I gotta take care of the okay. kids because okay, Jamia's okay. gotta finish her uh, college work before. And I gotta get them ready for school. But um, All In was cool. I liked it. Um, I thought <laughs> it made me kind of chuckle at one point when they're talking and they're like, "Well, when the darkest night happened with." You know, they're like referencing all the different crises that have happened uh -huh. and trying to like bring back things from metal and, uh -huh. you know, death metal and then um, infinite crisis. And then now how they were cut off from the multiverse and then all of this. And I'm just like, man, that is just trying to explain so much. Th that seems to be the new thing instead of, oh, hey, nothing ha counts after that last reboot. Everything it's like all counts. the reboots matter. Yeah. And because they, they almost the, have to, yeah, it's it birthed the omniverse where it's multiple multiverses and all you know, and you're just like, okay, all right, and I'm trying to even comprehend what makes sense anymore, and and then the, I mean the dark side one was I think more interesting mm -hmm. because that's really what set up what was happening with mm -hmm. dark side mixing with the specter and like his whole journey to basically make himself stronger. And then birthing a new universe. I was like, okay, this is interesting. I just, I guess I understand like where they're going with the whole, like on that side, you know, the absolute side, like this whole new multiverse uh, slash world where they're going to get books and stories. But other than that, like the whole all in initiative, I'm just kind of like, how is that any different than other things? Because they, they refuse tried... to say a reboot. Don't call it a reboot, call it a refresh. That is well, like, where we're well, at. I mean, it's just like when they did the dawn of DC, it, like and everyone and had. Flopped. But this one has more potential. I'm gonna be real with you. It, it, I mean, I just like the whole in the all in special when they're bringing the Justice League, like the Justice League Unlimited. <laughs> I'm like, so they're just basically doing the pilot of Justice League Unlimited. So somebody get Mark Wade on the phone. Yep. I was like, okay, but I'm just, you know they what? Listen, was... millennials run. The entertainment sphere right now. They are they are so desperately trying to recapture our attention and get our nostalgia dollars so hard in every single medium. And sometimes it works in certain um aspects, and other times it doesn't. We'll have to see how this one goes. I just want to say that the only comic right now that really has me where I'm like, what is this all about? Is Trinity. Hmm. Because I'm trying to figure out where does this take place? Where does this happen? It doesn't is this, matter. That's the point, Tyler. There's I, no continuity. No one's in control. I'm like, is this an alternate Earth? Because you're watching Damien and, and John are doing all this stuff like in the background with Trinity. And I'm like, but she hasn't even met anybody else yet. She, and then like they're aged up. And, That's their favorite thing to do, isn't it, Tyler? And then they're aged back down. And there's all this story. And I'm like, you know, this big mystery. And I'm like, what, what is going on with this? Which 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 one are we following this time, guys? I feel like that, that those are the total vibes right now. That's just where I'm at. Like with her, is I'm like, where does she fall into anything? Like she's not in any continuity or any books or her story. And like I read that whole Wonder Woman line, and like I was supposed to be like we were supposed to get some big reveal who her father is and all this stuff. And I'm just like, what's going on with this character? So that's the, oh, that's the one that's kind of technically a demigod. So it could even be her own dad is the hint that I was getting. But anyway, I, yeah, I'm just right like, now. what if I'm just like, what what's going on? Like, where is this character taking place? Like, is she going to eventually emerge with our modern current timeline? What is going on? So well, that, that's the thing that like, they've been testing so many things out. And like I said, they're they're definitely pushing. There's no continuity. Everything counts. So it doesn't matter. Just enjoy it. Oh, kind I mean, of and my, and my thing is I can't because I feel like continuity is how you have stake in a story. They don't want things to have stakes works. because, again, the young, they're trying to also appeal to that younger generation. It's kind of like if you play The Sims and you're playing The Sims 4, like you notice like a, a deep decrease in lore and it's just about aesthetics for the most part and just kind of like a pretty, like, instead of a sandbox, you have a dollhouse kind of approach. And I feel like mm. that perfectly sums up the, the vibes that uh, DC Comics specifically is trying to capture right now. Shut up and just leave it. But, I think I mean, absolute that's... power out and DC all in. I think this basically confirms it for me that that that's what they're chasing. Yeah, and, and I'm I'm interested. I want to see what they do with the absolute books, which again we'll see this week. I mean, I'm excited. I think I think like I said, like I was very surprised that I like. I'm like I like I was very surprised that I liked absolute power of the event. You know, I'm just like, oh, it's oh, Mark. It's, it's it is Mark Wade. I mean, but again, yeah. it's still a cash grab. It's still a reboot without yeah 
everything yeah. except for a name for them. So it's always like I'm always iffy. I'm and we and we knew and we knew it was coming eventually that they were going to re- restart the Justice League, but yeah, they have to though. let the Titans I mean, have it. I'm just I saying. just feel like <laughs> nothing in comics lasts for long. Is a problem anymore? Is, yeah. Not even death. No. I mean, it, I mean, especially like Mary Ellen I mean, was going, dead for how long? Right. 20, 20, I mean, going back twenty, 20 some years. Yeah. Going Mary back and re- and reading everything with Phil and like doing Electric Mullet, where we're going back to those comics, and you see that there's progression, and just in the in the short time of where we are and how many years, like so, what, we're like what Phil two three years. So, like, the books we're reading now are what, like, 88, 89? 88, 89, yeah. So, we're about three years from the 85 reboot. By that point in time, we've, we probably have already had, like, what, three crises in modern era? Yeah. You know? Like, and I just think about the 10 years um, since, you know, the New 52, when I really started making sure I caught up with all comics, how many crises, events, and reboot, and changes, and all this have happened. It's ridiculous because nothing gets to actually happen and go on. Like, as soon as a new writer comes in, they just want to reboot it back to the to the status quo instead of I blame Marvel and the Ultimate books. Well, Marvel that. and DC, it's like nobody can get more than a year or so on a book. And, and you know, at this point in some books, especially, so I get it, like they don't want to make that big of a commitment. Well, yeah, they, they make, yeah. well because a certain writer they made more than more than a one year commitment for, and look how that's panning out for them. So much so that we're having a fail wear fail wear for them. So. Ew. Uh, so I I'm totally gonna... get it at that point. All I'm going to say is how long do we think Alfred comes back and Bruce has all of his money back? Because that's the one thing I feel it's happened. Well, Bruce has... At the end of 2025. Bruce has his we'll money back. to complete status quo. Well, Bruce has his money back. Well, fail safe. To a point. Well, most of it. Fa- fail safe. Kind of fail, it was, it was a, oh, yeah. hey, fail safe made some good investments. I have money again. But yeah, no. But, yeah. It's kind of like when Oliver Queen lost his money on Arrow. You know what I mean? It's one yeah. of those vibes. Again, it's, a, it's a, one of those things where it's like Tony Stark loses his fortune and then he always rebuilds it back up. It's... But well, I'm just like tra- technically he's still a trust fund baby and he doesn't have full access to all his trust funds. So, you know, it's that whole thing. My thing is it. the only thing I feel like that's stayed so far major has been Alfred's death. And they're gonna fix that eventually. Yeah. Alfred is Alfred Pennyworth is too he's too much of a fan favorite for them to keep him dead too much. They longer. did that for future state, and again, that yeah. never came to pass. And that so. flopped hard. Yeah, that five G or whatever, yeah. They just haven't had the right writer right now to bring him back. Like it's been too many events after events to focus on it right now. So. That's all I mean I mean, I feel like that's how they would do it. He just slips in from another earth or like a timeline thing. No, no, no. Damien's definitely up. throwing him in the Lazarus pit. Sorry to break sorry to break it to him. <laughs> They're gonna be that I mean, lazy with it. And he comes back. He comes back as the young Alfred. I would love like, that. It comes back as like that Pennyworth TV series, Alfred. Man, people there missed out on that. Honestly, I thought it was pretty good. I thought season three was much better, but it still had some weirdness, like in well, places. It's to have weirdness. It was on epics, like. Well, I mean, that's the budget to properly do it. I mean, know? I think that's Bruno Heller in general. Oh, true, um, true. Okay. <laughs> but my thing was, then they and and then like. It's one of those prequel shows where it's like we're being a prequel, but then it threw out and did like some crazy stuff. I'm like, that makes no sense if you're a prequel show. All prequels and, eventually have that uh, that conundrum. I feel like it's unavoidable. Yeah, they want to get to and, the good stuff, but it's like, no, 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 that's too early for well, that. No. I mean, they were like, okay, the Waynes have a daughter. Yeah. And, and all this, and but all right, I got to And bounce. of course, it was yeah, it was a different universe anyway. So I just hoping it was more. It, it was going to be a more of a prequel towards gotham since it's all bruno heller like it was going to be yeah. like but all right you guys take care all right thanks tyler Bye. see you thanks tomorrow for joining us. all right before before we get out of here i know uh i know you did mention the, the storm number one so do you want to talk that yeah how, how did you like it i liked it i mean how do you how do you feel that now they're like putting her in the avengers and everything and, no yeah, absolutely not yeah that's what yeah i know it's not where she belongs I, I was more hoping for like some solo storm stuff. Yeah, like, so I was thinking if they, if they don't want to put her going her... like back to Africa maybe and like kind of like I, I like her like she was worshipped as I got like like that that storm. That's the aspects of storm that I like. I don't really like her being over here in, in the States. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Let alone teaming up with the Avengers. I'm just like Yeah. I feel like the X Men and Avengers have just so much so many fundamentally differences in how they do things that it just wouldn't work. Yeah, I know. Especially now that she has her own ongoing book, it's like, yeah, do that. You know, and she's not in, in an X Men book at the moment. Yeah, do that. You can, you know, have her travel in the world. But she is in Atlanta at least, so I like that. Yeah. I thought that was pretty kind of unique take. Um, 
I like the writer that they chose. Uh-huh. Uh, I was actually kind of surprised at the writer that they chose because pretty much unknown at that point, at this point for most people. Hmm. Um, and the artist is, was really really good. Oh, uh, yeah. Lucas did a good job. I, I like the art on this so much. Oh, yeah. I love the art on this. And I love how like she's going through her looks from previous and i was just like oh this is really cool i feel like these these writers really care about storm and you you're very lucky if you um get a character that you love that's your favorite and you have a writer that uh feels the same way and you can feel that through the page who knows the history and stuff yeah, yeah. so I, I really do appreciate that yeah no yeah no this yeah that was that this is one of the the better books this week well this past week yeah i'm interested to see where they go for this like i i just feel like i hope forge comes back i i hope she like makes a relationship with jubilee like i want to see some of the classic hallmarks of storm yeah and then i also would love to see some nods to like her time as like with the fantastic four and like a nod to black panther like i want i like i'm just being greedy but like those are just my kind of hopes i think yeah because that's the thing i mean again her own solo book yeah i mean there's so many so much potential you know wolverine's gonna show up eventually i give it to issue 10 have her travel in the world yeah some yeah that's what i that, that's what i mean like i very much want like a woman of in, international entry yeah vibes. that's what i want for storm could be so. like a mutant ambassador or something yeah exactly so what other book did you want to talk about uh i mean i'm good let me see what else we got uh well speaking of black panther ultimate black panther 9 was out yeah yeah, they're still they're still going pretty strong. I don't feel like like whereas like I lo- I love the Spider Book. Don't get me wrong, the Ultimate oh, <laughs> Ultimate Spider Man or whatever. But I do feel, feel like we're kind of spinning our wheels right now over there. But I feel like they're still going strong. They still have an idea. Like they're um they still have some a little bit left in the gas tank for the arc. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, I, I just kind of there's so many the because this is such a different take for um Black Panther. I feel yeah. like whereas the the Ultimate Spider Man book, I feel like there's some um. And I don't mean this in a bad way. There's some, like, retreading of familiar themes. And they're just kind of, like, literally, like, just kind of digging a little deeper and giving us a little more emotional resonance. And that's kind of the point of the Ultimate Spider-Man book. You know, he's married. He's got kids. You know, all that thing. Yeah. We've been there, done that. But we're kind of going in deeper. And it's kind of a juxtaposition to, say, the main book. Whereas Ultimate Black Panther, they're just, like, they're out there just swinging on a limb, doing stuff that you've never seen Black Panther do. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that just leads to more things. Uh, more things to explore for Black Panther. Plus, Black Panther hasn't technically had that many books as many books as Spider Man, no. so like a lot of this doesn't feel like a retread. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you're throwing in stuff like Conchu and stuff. And... Exactly. Like the the twist of it all. Yeah, it mm. makes it a little more interesting and kind of keeps you off balance where you don't know where they're going. I think I, I like that kind of approach for Black Panther. Uh, yeah, 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 definitely. And I love that it's so much magic. Yes, with Black Panther. Mm. I thought that was just such an interesting aspect for the book. Oh yeah, I mean it makes sense like this, like the older part of this older part of the world. And again, Wakanda has always been like. Well, it's not magic; it's tech. Yeah, but well, well here it's like is there something up with that vibranium in the Ultimate Universe? Mm-hmm. Not yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Oh, I want to ask your opinion. How is Immortal Thor going? Um. All right. Let me see. I I, I like this this uh, this week's issue because uh yeah number sixteen could it had an old school vibe. I liked it because again he br- he brings in uh radioactive man he's fighting radioactive man uh there we also had uh cobra and mr hyde showed up i was like it's, it's old school i love it yeah I, I heard a lot of people um saying a lot of good things and that's al ewing again yes so, um, and like it's, i don't know like i think he got a taste of that cosmic vibe with the stuff that he was doing um previously and kind of brought that into mortal thor full force maybe which is pretty cool he gets a chance to kind of like refine that yeah, I kind of like, yeah, it, he really, I mean, <clears throat> Mortal Hulk was great, but I think even more here, he's really, like, doing the tightrope of, uh, okay, here's the cosmic stuff, okay, here's something, you know, here's something on Earth, and here, you know, just... Yeah, I just never have been able to find Thor super, super relatable, mm-hmm. and uh, I just picked up a couple of issues, I was like, oh, this ain't bad at all, Mm-mm. Um, but maybe it's just Al. I think so, yeah, yeah, I mean, you just have to pick a good... Uh, it's not as easy to write Thor as you think. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. exactly. Kind of have to make him relatable and not get too crazy with it. And he's got so much responsibility, and like I kind of like the the subtle um, way that Al kind of has crafted the story that's kind of weighing on him, but he's not trying to let it because you know that that's not Thor really the the, the Marvel Thor anyway. Like he's kind of a pretty go go lucky guy if you let him be. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. But being all father, that's a lot of responsibility. You know? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. 
So yeah, I, I picked it up just out of curiosity. I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. All right. Any other book you want to talk about? Uh, no. What about you? I know we're kind of running long. Um, no, that's good because again, we talked we talked a bunch of Spider Man and Batman stuff on uh the other shows, so we're we good. Yeah. Uh, are, are, are you still are you reading Wolverine Deep Cut? Yes. Yeah. 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 That. Um, what What do you think? It was all right. I mean, I I kind of like that. You know that. Chris Claremont's run was so long that yeah, there are there are moments you know it's like oh I didn't get to this you know about the whole thing with the Marauders and everything so yeah I thought it was hilarious. Do you think this is gonna get a red band issue? I don't know. I mean, this was the last. Uh, what issue, makes so. a red? I still want to know what makes a red band issue. I guess if it's Deadpool or Wolverine, like I figure it would just have a red band. I mean, I th- it seemed like a lot of the horror stuff did. Like if they do like a Werewolf by Night, or I think the what was it? Uh, I don't know if it was every issue, but the, I know the first issue of uh, Blood Hunt uh, or yeah. Yeah, yeah, got a red band. So I think if it's like vampires or werewolves, they're they're down for it. But yeah, I'm just interested to figure out what the line of that all um, is all. But yeah, I'm surprised they didn't try to sneak in uh, a red band on Spider Man for that most brutal fight in history. You know, they they knew not to push it. Listen, they're like they're oh. trying to they're like well they're trying to downplay the, the exit as much as possible. If you've noticed, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> quick blurb and then letters page. Oh hey. <laughs> Uh, I do want to go over to Kingspawn thirty eight. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I this this is my favorite spawn. Well, yeah, no, no, Gunslinger is my favorite, but this is my second favorite spawn book so far. Mm-hmm. I mean, how you feeling the vibes? I mean, in all the books, and basically everyone's depowered. Yeah, it's interesting to see how they um they're handling it. Mm-hmm. Everybody's kind of reacting to it a little different, and I think that's where Kingspawn kind of just is a step above the rest of them in that point. Because, uh-huh. like, he's like, I, I'm still going to do what I do. <laughs> I'm all- not going to sit around and mope about it. I'm going to do what I do. <laughs> and it's almost like, a, you know, like Al Simmons, I mean, he's pretty much normal now. It's like, well, you, this is what you wanted. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah. It is kind of interesting. Like, every time, like, I don't know, to me, anytime I just see any Spawn book and I see some other artists other than Todd McFarlane, I'm just like, that just doesn't feel right. But I do like the artists on King Spawn. Lot. Yes. Um, yes. Sonara is super, super talented and uh, very like detailed, and I, I like the coloring and the inking on it. it. Really makes it pop and and have like this this hellish, devious undertone that I just that that's what you come to spawn for. Mm-hmm. And and again, it's like the artists like really like each book has like its own flavor and stuff. Yeah, I like that. Like it was like it's one thing like you know to see like I said when Todd is the writer and the artist, but then like to see somebody else's take on it, and he's still the writer, so he still has pretty much and the boss of the company so he pretty much has final say but just to see somebody's interpretation of his character and it just kind of gives it that fresh pop i guess it's yeah nice. exactly but no yeah. that was about it for me yeah. i mean there's a new barbarella out from dynamite um Ooh. if you were into the old one this new one <laughs> is even better um, it is a five dollar book, but the art is amazing. If you, I mean, people don't. I mean, I pretty much are reading Barbarella for the art, not the story. Let's let's just be real. If you know, you know with the Dynamite books. Um, but it's still a pretty good story. But the art pretty much is what you come for. So, hell, hell. But I just wanted to shout that out. Um, I don't really talk about Dynamite a lot because Charlie's not here. <laughs> so, Dynamite. <laughs> Yeah, it's got Barbarella, Vampirella, Red Sonya. That that that's who uh, the main characters for Dynamite are. So yeah, uh, I guess I'll talk about IDW real quick too. Uh, we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Night Watcher number two out. Yeah, how's that? I mean, it's Junie Ba. This is where Junie Ba shines doing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stuff over at IDW. In my personal opinion. Oh, nice. Um, I don't feel like DC when they had uh, Junie really like leveraged what Junie is good at. They just kind of like gave Junie a story and said here hmm. <laughs> whereas like I they, I feel like they didn't ask Junie what they wanted to write hmm. and just you know what I mean like you have to like it, you have to really give a, a, a writer something that they can latch on to and I just feel like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is Junie Boss thing oh, real nice. fan loves to write the story you can fill it through the pages oh nice yeah so yeah well that's pretty much all my books okay all right yeah um, that that's that's good for me all right so Oh, wait, we were supposed to talk about, oh, did you ever pick up I Know What You Did Last Crisis? No, I didn't pick that up yet. No. Okay, pick it up, and we will talk about it the next time we talk, okay? Okay, okay. You're going to love it, I promise. Oh, yeah. I know it's a $10 book, but you are going to love it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I heard some good things about it, so. Uh, I heard what you did last crisis. 
It's like, which one was that again? No, exactly the point. Oh, exactly really? The point. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's very tongue in cheek. It's a lot of satire. Okay. It's, it's very fourth wall breaking. I love this so much. Okay, I'm down for that then. All right, all right, kids. So yeah, so uh, yeah, share your, your thoughts on uh, Joker on new comics. Our next movie review, I'm sure, will probably, should be uh, Venom: The Last Dance. So, uh, email us capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail six one four three eight two two seven three seven. That's six one four thirty eight capes. And remember, you can find all things Capes Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise. Get your brand new Capes Lunatics merch or classic Capes Lunatics merch. Uh, you can always, uh, well, please, Wolf demands you rain, rain the money on us through the Cash App link. Make it rain. <laughs> We're just we're just poor stu- uh, college students trying to make it through Gotham, man. Once again, yeah, don't make us dance on that pool in, Go- in Gotham because you know it's Gotham. She looks like she was just working a f- stripper pole down at Divas. And of course, the Patreon, where again you get exclusive, uncensored content every month. And if you are a patron, you can uh, suggest topics for us to re- talk and review. So worth it for the price alone so uh yeah get on board there and you can find that at patreon.com slash capes and lunatics and you can find everything else all in one place that's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network that's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network and well if i don't think you have any plugs because uh your your social media is shrinking and shrinking yeah well it's facebook like um yeah I just, um, I'm going to be locked out of my account, so I don't know if I'll make a new one. Oh. Either do the six or do the nine. Oh, my. All right. So, thank you for joining us, kids. Again, see Joker at your own risk. (laughs) I'd say wait to stream it, personally. Yeah. From the comfort of your own home. Why go out into the, oh, well, you and Tyler didn't have to go be among unwashed masses, but still. Yeah. Glad to leave your house. Poor people. I know. All right, kids. For another week, we have been New York Capes. Alpasan. Lunatics. That's right. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we'll have another interview between now and then, but yes, the next movie review at the end of the month will be uh, Venom: The Last Dance. Another franchise going on with the one. Then we'll get what Craven in December. They keep threatening us. I don't know. Uh, like a stab to the gut. <laughs>